him. Praise him. Oh, praise him in the morning and praise him in the noon today. Oh, praise him. Let us praise him. Just praise him when the sun goes down. Hallelujah. 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 He is worthy of praise. I want you to know the songwriter is telling us really to praise God all day long. Now, start in the morning. Uh, praise Him in the noonday. Uh, praise Him when the sun goes down. Uh, but you can praise Him during the night too. Uh, praise Him all day long. Uh, in Him we live and move uh, and have our being. We have a reason uh, to praise God today. Uh, as we're here once again in the house, uh, I do have a thought that I want to share with you. And if you'll go to Psalm number 107. Psalm 107. Hallelujah. If you get that in your hand, we shall read it a few verses together. That's the only place you'll need today. Usually I have some supporting scriptures, but I think this one will su support itself. Is that all right? God's word is true. If you only read a couple of words, sometimes it may impact your whole day. Hallelujah. But I see here in Psalm 107, I'm going to begin reading with verse number 11. Well, no, I want to read more than that. Let's go all the way back to 5. We shall read 5 through 8, and then I'll jump over to 11. All right, are you with me? All right, verse 5. Hungry and thirsty, their soul fainteth in them. Then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble. And he delivered them out of their distresses. Number 11. Because they rebelled against the words of God. And condemned the counsel of the Most High. Therefore he brought down their heart with labor. They fell down and there was none to help. Then. I want you to catch this. Then, they were in trouble, all right. Then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble, and he saved them out of their distresses. He brought them up, uh, brought them out rather of darkness and the shadow of death, and break their bands in sunder. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Hallelujah. Lord God, we ask thy blessing upon the word today. Though, my God, we may be in distresses. My God, there may be temptations and trials. It may seem like the devil has pitched his tent on our back porch or even on our front porch. There's somebody, my God, that can deliver. We look, my God, unto God today. Lord, hallelujah. Work your work in our hearts. Help us, Lord, to lift up our eyes and to behold the glory of our God. In Jesus' name we pray and you may be seated. My subject today is all that men would praise the Lord. All that men would praise the Lord. I know the angels uh, give glory to God in heaven. Uh, hallelujah. And if you think we can sing, uh, I wonder what they sound like when they strike up a chorus. Uh, hallelujah. Uh, uh, and when they began to praise God, uh, when I think about some of the great angels, uh, hallelujah, mighty warriors for God, uh, when God sent uh, some of these great angels uh, down to the earth to do something, uh, they did it in a mighty way. Hallelujah. But I want you to understand when God by God uses them it's for a purpose to accomplish that that is needed in the earth. I want you to see today as we are here no matter what's going on in our lives there's a God that is able to help us. I'm not alone. I'm not here without help. But God is willing to deal with 
with each one of us. Uh, we each come in here uh, with our own little set of problems. Uh, hallelujah. Oh, I know we have problems. Uh, we're not exempt from problems. Uh, though we be children of the living God, uh, the devil doesn't mind standing on your shoelaces uh, so you can't dance very far. Uh, hallelujah. Uh, he doesn't mind whispering in your ear. Uh, even though you may have a scripture in your heart, uh, he still will try to mess with you. Uh, he will try to take the scripture uh, you're thinking about uh, and try to turn it upside down. Uh, when you thought the scripture said God loved you, uh, he'll tell you he don't really love you. Uh, hallelujah. Uh, if he loved you, uh, you wouldn't be in this mess. Uh, this is the kind of thing our enemy does. Uh, he'll try to take the things uh, that should be our deliverance uh, and try to tie us up with it. Uh, but I know somebody. Uh, I said I know somebody. Somebody uh, that can help me. Uh, somebody uh, that can turn, uh, hallelujah, the situation around uh, and turn men's minds backward uh, and allow my mind to see straight on. Uh, my God is good. Uh, and this morning I want to give him glory. Uh, I, I got some questions for you. Uh, has God been good to you? Uh, hallelujah. Uh, has uh, he helped you uh, and brought brought you through, uh, do you realize uh, that he is the reason uh, you are here? I am here because God brought me here. Uh, I'm here because God holds me here. Uh, I don't save myself. Uh, you don't save yourself. Uh, I know what that was said in the scripture. Save yourself from this un uh, untoward generation. Uh, but you can't save yourself. Uh, you can only make the decision to come unto God who is our Savior. Uh, we cannot save ourselves uh, from anything. Lord, help me. I don't want you to, to leave me here because I said what I said. I, I want you to know God is the one that's carrying us through. Uh, hallelujah. Uh, when you take a trip and you buy uh, a, a ticket uh, on an airline or a bus or a, a train, you are depending on, on something that's greater than you are to get you from point A to point B. Uh, I want you to know when we came into the church, uh, we came into the old ship of Zion. Uh, hallelujah. Uh, we've got a ticket uh, to be delivered into another border. Uh, no longer here, uh, but willing to take us all the way to glory. Uh, but I'm in. Uh, I've got a seat. Uh, I've got a right uh, to be in the house of God this morning. Uh, i got a right uh, to pull up to the table of God uh, and eat of the good things uh, that he has given us. Uh, there is a privilege to the people of God uh, that those in the world do not have in God my God is great and glorious as I mentioned this morning in him I live and move and have my being but I want you to know my God is the reason why I can be here I have the right to be here because he brought me in. He's the one that filled me with his own spirit and caused me to walk uprightly. It's not what I have done. It's what God has done. I think sometimes we take too much credit to ourselves. If we were left alone for just a little while, we would self-destruct. We'd go back to where we came from. I am what I am by the help of God. I want you to know that. The Holy Ghost uh, is our keeper. Uh, hallelujah. Uh, no wonder I needed the Holy Ghost because uh, I sure needed to be kept uh, in this world. Uh, the tendencies are going uh, in wrong directions. Uh, our human hearts uh, pick up uh, these messages from the world uh, and the things they show you on TV and that's in the magazines and these ads. Uh, they're trying to get your attention, but there's some subliminal messages in there as well. They may be talking about a product, but they're showing you something else. Yeah, I know I'm right. They don't just put out a bottle and set it on the counter and take a picture of it. If they're trying to reach the men crowd, they'll give you a woman scantily dressed, holding that bottle with a great big smile. When you get in that bottle, you're not going to find her in there. I'm, I'm trying to talk about the subliminal messages. 
Some people uh, want to find a way for themselves uh, and do it their way uh, and they'll end up in heaven. Uh, but I'm going to tell you, if you're not on the right ship, you're not going the right direction. Uh, hallelujah. Uh, I want God to guide me. Uh, I want him to help me through here. Uh, I got troubles all around me. Uh, but thanks be unto God, uh, I've got his spirit all around me too. Uh, in the midst of my troubles, uh, I find grace and help uh, to be able to live according to God's commandments uh, looking at what we we were looking at here it said when uh, we were hungry uh, and thirsty uh, these people of Israel uh, were in trouble uh, their soul fainted uh, hallelujah they were saying their soul fainted in them have you ever felt like your soul was fainting in you been in trouble, got up in some stuff uh, that was too deep and it didn't seem like you could swim. Uh, hallelujah. Uh, but I know somebody, uh, hallelujah, that can come down there where I am. Uh, hallelujah. Uh, he's not afraid to descend down uh, out of the courts of glory uh, and come to rescue uh, one of his children. Uh, he knows how uh, to get a hold of our hands uh, and to lift us up. You better hold that Bible because I'm going to pull you off on up hallelujah pull you out of darkness and bring you over into the marvelous light fill your soul with the spirit of God set my God your heart on fire oh with the glory Lord help me he knows how to change everything from the sole of our feet to the crown of our head the Holy Ghost takes charge Oh, yeah. Am I right, Brother Mike? Yeah, you're right. All right. Thank you, Brother Mike. Uh, uh, he just got the Holy Ghost a few weeks ago. Hallelujah. We're glad uh, for the wonder of God. Uh, and I want you to know the Holy Ghost is for everybody. Uh, it's not just for a few saints somewhere. Uh, he'll take ants and make them saints. Uh, he'll take the sinner and clean them up. Uh, it's God's will uh, not to leave you uh, where he finds you, uh, but to bring you into the glories uh, that he has for you. Uh, it's God's desire to seek and to save the lost. It's not my desire to do these things only secondarily. It's God's will. I said it's God's will. If he wants to save you, you can be saved. The only problem is you. I think I'm right. When he came after you, you were your own problem. He had to get you off from you. Before he gets you from you to him. Hallelujah. Lord help me as I'm talking here this morning. Uh, then uh, he call, uh, uh, we see the, the cause of God. Uh, he caused uh, us uh, to cry unto the Lord. Uh, when my trouble was on me. Uh, when my sin was messing with me. Uh, when I was all disturbed. Uh, hallelujah. Uh, when everything seemed so dark uh, and so hard. Uh, we had the right to fall down uh, at the altar of God. Uh, oh. Oh, God, help me. Have you been there? Well, you ought to get there sometime. It's good for you to cry unto the Lord Most High, the one that sees, the one that knows. And when my tears was falling down, when I was looking for help, he didn't just leave me there. He came, and he was the one that went to work in my heart to console me and to direct my mind and my heart in the way in which he wanted it to go. I want you to know man of his own self will not find God but it's God who finds man. If you want to be found you have a right to call upon him. Hallelujah while he is near. Seek him while he may be found. I want you to know God is not far from any one of us. According to the reading of my Bible he's never very far from any one of you. You may feel like you're way out in some strange place uh, and can't do anything uh, but God's really not very far uh, if you'd start calling uh, on the name of Jesus uh, oh Jesus uh, oh Jesus help me uh, I want you to know uh, he can hear uh, the faintest cry uh, one songwriter said he'll answer by and by uh, but sometimes he'll answer right now too uh, a God that is able uh, to deliver uh, 
a God that cares. He can throw you a lifeline, hallelujah, like none other. So you can get a hold of it. And he can draw you from the place where you've been stuck into the wonders of God's goodness. The love of God that passes all understanding can cause you to stand in awe of his power and glory. Today as we're in the house of God, we are blessed people. I tell you, we are blessed people. We are blessed with the kindness of God. God heard us one of those days when we were crying out. I said, oh God, hear us. The people of God in the Old Testament finally turned and began to cry out unto God in our reading. And God heard them. Though they were in distresses, though they were in trouble God was willing to hear their cry sometimes God allows us to get into a stuck position whereby God can begin to talk to us and to reason with us why we are where we are and allow us to see the glory of God that's able to indeed bring you from where you are into where he is that's the blessing I'm no longer just where I am but now I want to be where he is where he is it's better there's light hallelujah in the camp where the Lord is. I want you to know there's help in the camp where the Lord is. There's deliverance, hallelujah, from the things that have taunted us and caused us trouble for years. It's God's will to deliver us from our own flesh. Oh Lord, help me. And if that's not enough, the old devil will come and camp right next to you. If you want to be nasty, he'll come right there and give you all the nasty you can handle. Come on with me. Lord, I I know where we came from. I said, I know where we came from. I'm going to get to that in a bit. You might as well get ready because I'm going to get there after a while. Didn't he deliver you? Didn't he help Israel? Look how he brought them out. The same God that brought them out is the same God that wants to bring you out. He's willing, hallelujah, to work and deal with your sin. Well, I've got problems, and I I don't do everything right, and and I've sinned, and I know I'm in a terrible place. God wants to help you. It's not God's will that any should perish, so he doesn't want you to perish. Just because you're wrong doesn't mean that you can't get right. There's somebody uh, that's great enough to take your wrong uh, and make it worthwhile. Uh, He's able to take away the things uh, that is dragging you down in degradation uh, and making you ashamed of yourself. Uh, There's a God that cares uh, when nobody else cares. Uh, When you've come to the end of your rope, uh, there's somebody on the other end of the rope. Uh, Hallelujah. Thank God there's somebody uh, that can help me. Uh, There's times when we need help. uh, And I'm telling you in this world, world of sin. Men need help today. There's horrors going on around the people on our own block. You don't have to go very far. Said so You don't have to go very far. There's trouble all over in this world. I've been to other countries, flown across the oceans, and been where people are, and I see the same kind of stuff. Oh yes, they're dressed different. They may have more or less of certain substances, but the main problem is still sin, Brother Terry. Hallelujah. I went to India. There was sin there. Went to the Philippines. There was sin there. Every place I go, Russia, England, hallelujah, all kinds of places that I've been able to go to, I find the same problem. The devil is working against human nature and messing up people so that they are somehow confused with where their help is supposed to come from. And if you're looking for somebody, hallelujah, in the government to bail you out. They're in trouble themselves. They're looking for us to put money back into the government to bail the government out. Well, all these programs, well, we're going to have this program, that program. Who's going to pray for the program? Who's, who's going to pay for it? Who? Who? You! Me! We need to wake up. Nothing comes for free. When I got married and had some children, 
Nobody brought me food for those children. I had to get out and work for it. Is that right, Brother Coleman? <laughs> uh, uh, the, the old story is uh, no work, no food, no food. You don't eat, and if you don't eat, you're going to get weak. <laughs> I just want you to understand, I need to hear from God frequently. Uh, Let's talk about the spiritual side. Uh, It wasn't enough uh, that 57 years ago, God filled me with the Holy Ghost. Uh, Oh, it was so wonderful. You can't live on that forever. I'm glad it happened 57 years ago, but I want him today. I need food for my soul today. I can't eat once and go all the way into glory. I need to be fed by the Spirit and the power of God. It's his will to give us the finest of the wheat. We're not eating trash in here. What God has for us makes us strong people in the world. You say, wait a minute, there's no presidents in here. There's no senators in here. Maybe that's good. But anyway, we do have some saints in here uh, that walk with God, uh, that serve God, uh, that praise us God, uh, that magnifies the Most High, uh, people that are making themselves ready uh, to go when the trumpet sounds. Uh, I want you to know, uh, I don't know if the president's going to make it or not. You have to do some changing. Come on with me now. But what about you? What about you? Do you understand when the church is raptured, they're going to go into something that is called the marriage supper of the Lamb. Hallelujah. The Lamb is Jesus Christ. He was the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. And when we go there, we are going to be married. The church is talked about as being the wife, the bride of Christ. Are you with me? The bride of Christ. Well, you can't be a bride unless you get married. Well, don't back up on me now. I'm trying to help you. When we come into God, we've done something. Hallelujah. Do you know this world and all of its pomp and circumstance don't mean much of anything when you get to the heavenly realm? I want you to know up there, i I, got to make some uh, uh, comparisons down here. You have 70 or so years as an average. That's it. It's over. Goodbye. Remember that 72-inch ruler I talked about with my boss? I'm at 66. That don't leave much. I know I'm not going to be here forever. Well, if by reason of strength, I might have more. But by reason of weakness, I might have less. (laughs) You see, we we don't look at the other side of this. No man knows the number of his days. Nobody on earth knows when they're going to go. But one thing you can have, you can have this assurance uh, that he loves me uh, and he loved me enough to save me uh, and bring me into the church uh, that I might be part of the bride of Christ. uh, And when the trumpet sounds, uh, I'm going to go, hallelujah, to meet him. Uh, I'm going to be changed uh, that I might be like unto him. Uh, And with that change, uh, I'm going to be fit uh, not only to be with him at the marriage supper of the Lamb, uh, but to be married to him. Uh, And when you marry a king, uh, then as a woman you become the queen now come on with me somewhere hallelujah and i want you to know god has always been the man of god in psalms again said from everlasting to everlasting if you go back in the past everlasting you can't get to the end of it because it never stops When you go in the future, you can't get to the end of it because it never stops. It's everlasting. Hallelujah. And he's inviting us to come and to partake of the timeless eternity. And I say timeless because time is just the space out of eternity where he said he was going to create. And at the end, he's going to destroy. And it'll go back into eternity. You have the chance to get out of this rat race that we call human life, living in this world, to be made, hallelujah, ready for the marriage supper of the Lamb. Hallelujah. To be married to the King of kings and Lord of lords. Hallelujah. When, uh, hallelujah, we are crowned. Paul talked about a crown. He said there's a crown laid up. 
Hallelujah. He knew he had a crown coming. Hallelujah. Are you ready for a crown? Are you ready to give over to the Lord and let the Lord have his way with you? So when this life is over, you have an expectation, not of a few more years, but to be in an eternal body and live throughout eternity in the realms of God. Hallelujah. That unending situation. There's nobody. I said, there's nobody. There's no God uh, but our living God uh, that gives us such an opportunity and yet men won't hear him Uh, he's got the best offer anybody could give us I want you to know today we are blessed uh, to be in the house of God, uh, to be one of his praisers. uh, Somebody that will say, hallelujah, oh, glory be to God. Uh, Oh, you're wonderful. Uh, Somebody's going to sing his praises. Uh, Somebody uh, is going to give them uh, or give him their heart. Uh, And when we do, uh, he's willing to keep us uh, by his grace and mercy uh, to carry us through all the struggles of this life. Uh, Sure things will come against you. The devil's not ashamed uh, to come and talk to you. Uh, I don't care how many years you've been saved. Uh, God will, I mean the devil will come and whisper in your ear his mess. He will try to mess with your emotions to go along with what he's doing. Come on here. Well, you, you act like you don't know what I'm talking about. How many has been messed with by the devil? Raise your hand. Come on. Don't lie to me. I'm not going to take it. Everybody in the house that's come to knowledge, the devil has tried to mess with you. And some of you are still in the mess and you think you're all right because you're still in the mess. When you come out, you understand where you came from. Hallelujah. Do you hear? There's a song. Hallelujah. We used to sing. Look where he brought me from. Look where he brought me from. He brought me out of darkness into this marvelous light. You can't see till you get in the light. But look where he brought you from. I'm glad I'm from some places. I'm glad I'm from some situation. I'm glad I got away from the devil's clutches. I'm glad to be a child of God. This is not a hardship. It's a glorious way to live. Walking with Jesus with the power of the Holy Ghost on our side. As long as I'm at it, let me fill in some blanks. Hallelujah. Oh, that men would praise the Lord. For his goodness, his wonderful works, hallelujah to the children of men. Look what God has done for you. You remember when you had your big problem? Mm. You might have prayed earnestly for the first time. But God didn't leave you there. There's many a sinners that's never yet been saved that had God help them. Come on with me. There was a man in the time of Paul and we see different individuals that come in and out of the scenes where the men of God had to proclaim the word of God in a better manner for them. They knew about God. They were trying to serve God. But they didn't have all they needed. So they taught them a more perfect way. You may be somebody that has a relationship, a spiritual event in your life. But I want to talk about the more perfect way for a minute. Hallelujah. God didn't just want us to repent. That wasn't the end of things. And I don't even believe you can repent unless God gives you godly sorrow. This thing of just repeat after me and you're in. It's not in the book. I'm going to teach you more perfectly. That is not in the scriptures. 
They try to draw from some things of people who are already baptized in Jesus' name, filled with the Holy Ghost over in some of the God, uh, some, over here in some of the epistles, uh, and try to extract some ideas from there and tell you that's how you get saved. If you want to know how to get saved, read the book of Acts. That's where it started. He never changes. He's always the same, both now and forever. He will remain. God never changes. He's not flip-flopping. He's not like people. Put up one thing and then put up something else. From the beginning, he had this in mind. That's why Jesus was as a lamb slain before the foundation of the world. He wanted to make sure there was help for us because he knew we were going to be sinners. He knew Adam was going to mess up. So he already had a lamb ready in his programming, in his focusing. Even before there was light, he had the lamb of God in his mind. It was the engineered drawing, if you would, of that that was going to be built later on. The plan was complete. He made man knowing that man would fall. For God knows ahead of time what's going to happen. He knows where your life is headed. You may not know where it's headed, but God already knows. And he's already prepared a lamb that has died on the cross of Calvary that he might save you from your sins. It's not God's will that any would perish, but that all would come to repentance. This God is not playing games, and this God doesn't need thousands of ways to get saved. Do you understand? Our world is full of all kinds of people trying to tell you how you can be saved, and they're not all alike either. The only one that's going to work is God's. If God's not in it, I don't care who's in it. Or how many's in it, it don't make it right. When God comes, he's going to take what he wants, no matter who says, oh, I belong to God, I belong to God. Only the ones that God said belong to God is going to go with God. Somebody's got to tell the truth. I'm going to tell you, everybody in this dispensation needs to repent. Hallelujah of their sins. Hallelujah. And to do that, you ought to seek for godly sorrow so you're sorry for what you've been doing. Hallelujah. And then make that turn toward God. Hallelujah. And then follow his instructions. You ought to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. You've got to get that sin situation taken care of. He'll wash your sins away. Uh, hallelujah. You can come up out of the water uh, free from your previous sins. Uh, hallelujah. Rising to walk uh, in a newness of life. Uh, he wants to fill you uh, with the Holy Ghost. Uh, and the evidence of the Holy Ghost, according to the book of Acts, uh, is speaking in other tongues. Oh, but that's old fashioned. Listen, God doesn't change with the times. He doesn't change with humanity. God doesn't have to change. He was perfect in the beginning. He's perfect in the middle. He's perfect in the end. Everything he does is perfect. He doesn't have to adapt to our day. Well, you see, in this day, what in the world made you think this day was going to be any better than that day? I see when the apostles were saved on the day of Pentecost. They experienced, every one of them, 120. It wasn't just, the, it wasn't just the, uh, those that were his disciples that he called individually, but there was 120, including even Jesus' own mother. Now, if anybody would seem to be saved automatically, you would think it would be his mother, but his mother had to be there too and receive the Holy Ghost. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and all the other disciples that had followed him and was taught by him for three and a half years repented, was baptized, filled with the Holy Ghost. Every one of them that's talked about in the scriptures where it talks about their particular conversion, it is the same way. Even Paul who came in later God had dealt with him 
Hallelujah. When he thought he was doing a, a great work for God, uh, he was religious like all get out. Uh, he was going and taking people and putting them in prison and all these kind of things and, and even having some of them killed. He was so zealous for what he believed. It's not how you believe, it's what you believe that's going to make the difference. There's people that will tell you, oh, I don't think it's so much what you believe, it's just how you believe it. I'm going to tell you, you better have the right thing to believe or you're not going to make it. Somebody's got to tell the truth. There's no place in your Bible that said, now you don't need to speak in tongues anymore to be saved. Now you don't need to be baptized in water to be saved. It's not there. It's men's ideas. If you're going to be saved, you're going to have to be saved God's way. He's the only one that can save you. All right, I got to hurry now. I only got a few moments left. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and his wonderful works. I want you to know one of the great works of God. He'll come down and work with you and draw you out of sin and help you to become a child of God. I know some of us, I know where he brought us through. We were in distress, all right. Some of us were in drugs, alcohol, rambling, running, late night rambling, street running, come on, lived in the streets, cheating, stealing, cursing. Are you with me? It's a good thing none of you know anything about any of this stuff, right? You know where you came from. I know where I came from. I was a nasty fella when God got a hold of me and turned me around, set my feet on solid ground, gave me the opportunity to have tears falling down my eyes, bathing the altar with my tears, asking God to help me. And there was a time when he came by while I was yet crying, while I was still trying to find my way unto him. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And God came by, got a hold of my tongue, and I listened to myself. Hallelujah, talking a language that I knew was coming out of my mouth, but my head said, I don't know this one, but my ears heard it. It was there for a testimony. God had showed up. Hallelujah. It wasn't what I did. It was what God did for me. What God did for me, he's willing to do for anybody. You don't have to be lost when there's a Savior in the house. Well, but all of them didn't. They, they weren't there in the upper room. No, when Paul wasn't in there, God filled him with the Holy Ghost. And he declared in the scriptures, I speak in tongues more than you all. You didn't have to be in the upper room to get the Holy Ghost. You can be in this room and get the Holy Ghost. God. God is no respecter of persons. I want you to know uh, the singers, you might as well come. I'm going to start singing something, but you can have your own after you get going. Hallelujah. But I got one I want to sing. He set me free. Yes, he set me free. Oh, he broke the bands of hell. Uh Oh, oh, I'm glory bound by Jesus to see well. To God, yes, he set me free. Well, he set me free. Yes, he set me free. Oh, he broke the bands of heaven for me. Oh, I'm glory found by Jesus to see. Well, glory to God. Oh, he set me free. Yes, he set me free. Yes, he set me free. Well, he broke the bands of prison for me. Well, I'm oh my, oh glory to God. He set me free. Oh, he said, Can you say it? Can you sing it? He set me free. Oh, he broke the bands of prison for me. Oh, I'm glory bound by Jesus to see well and glory 
to God will he set me free. Oh, he set me free. Are you a witness? Can you stand up and say, he set me free? Come on, stand up. If you've been set free, stand up. Stand up. And if you are not set free, come and be made free. Jesus is able to free you from your sin today. You don't have to go out of this door like you came in. You can go out of here a new man in Christ Jesus. He set me free when he broke the bands of prison for me. Oh, glory found my Jesus. Well, glory to God, he set me free. There's some up here seeking God. You might as well come. God's willing to help you. If you want to step out while the people standing, it makes it easier to get by. Come on, come on, come on. Make it right with God. Why don't you come and get it right today? He may come tomorrow. There's no need of being lost. Come, come while you may. He said, I'll be free. Yes, he said, me free. Well, he broke the bed of prison for me. Well, I'm glory bound by Jesus to see. Well, glory to God. He set me free. Oh, he set me free. Yes, he set me free. He broke the bed of prison for me. Take it. I'm glory bound by Jesus to see. Oh, glory to God. Set yeah, me free. Oh, he set me free. Oh, he set me free. He broke the bands of prison for me. Oh, I'm glory bound. set us free. Amen. Those of us who've been born again of water and spirit, we've been set free. God can break those